Okay. We, we got to talk more China and NBA, though. All right. Dude, this is wild what's happening because it's nonstop. Bresler right now is that little excited girl gif. But I've never seen anything like this. Bresler right now is eating the cotton, he's cotton candy eating girl. Remember her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen this in sports where this basically socioeconomic slash political issue has taken such – like it's, it, it's come to the forefront more than – can you think of anything in your lifetime? I mean, it's it's definitely – it's still kind of under the radar, I feel like, if you're a sports fan. You think? A little bit. Like, it's not Kaepernick, you know, where it's like all – like, it's not trending the whole day. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're any sort of NBA fan, it is crazy. So – Now they're talking about uh, – you, you saw this. The cap – the salary cap potentially going down. I put this on the rundown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some people are saying like fifteen percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine teams being affected but next yo, year? I feel like we gotta te- we gotta really explain things to okay. everybody. I'm not trying to say you guys are idiots, but but a lot of you defended Dave Roberts for years. And this is kind of a, a complex issue. It's not that complex, but it's complex enough. Let a man in an oversized Rich, Richie Incognito jersey break this down for you. <laughs> so, like any other company. Or brand, the NBA is, in a way, owned by China. Heavily They're backed by. Heavily financially backed. And again, I want to reiterate, God knows the amount of things I'm wearing or in my apartment or China. But see, the difference is, I know I'm a piece of shit for supporting a country that doesn't give rights. See, that's the difference, and I own it and say, well... Well, the NBA knows it, too. That's why they're like, hey, guys, like, let's not talk about it. But just own it. That's Again, That that's my stance on this whole situation for all these people is basically just... It, like, if, if, some, if Adam Silver or Steph Curry or Steve Kerr, whoever, just said, hey, man, it's fucked up over there, but I like making millions... I mean that wouldn't actually bother me. At yeah, least at I, least they're being honest. I don't even think that but I like making millions. I don't even think you would have to go that far. You just be like, "Hey man, this is above my pay grade. I'm a player. I'm a coach. I want to play or coach basketball at the highest level. Therefore, I'm going to do it in the NBA." If there was a greater basketball league in all the world that was, you know, only supported by freedom having countries and that I can make, you know, as much money as I can here and I can have as much success. I can prove myself on the highest level there. Then I would play in that. But for now, I want to compete at the highest level. And that is the NBA. If you want to talk about how the NBA supports itself and how that's a discussion that you want to have with the commissioner. I'm just a player. I'm just a coach. Now we were talking about it on the live podcast yesterday the the dangerous thing is you open yourself up to these kind of criticisms when you talk about other shit yeah so when steve kerr or greg popovich in particular sit there and blast the trump can't the trump candidacy and his basically policies which by the way i'm not saying i necessarily disagree with a lot of those but the point is that joe's trying to make is if you're going to be so outspoken, like like Kerr is, especially on social media, on, let's say, the policies with ICE and rounding up illegal immigrants, you then also can't suddenly get silent when asked a question about, hey, man, China's rounded up a million to a million and a half Muslims and put them in labor camps. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, uh. I don't I really to, know a lot about the situation. I need to read up more on the issue. I need to talk to my brother who's an East Asian fucking professor. Well, then you just look like an asshole. Yeah, you do. And that's all that Joe and I are trying to say. Again, we like a lot of these people. I like Kerr. Yeah, me I too. like Popovich. Yeah. Steph Curry's a great player. But when you're asked basic things, it's not that complex of an issue. And, and that's the only pro- like that's the main problem we have and that I have is no one's asking Stan Van Gundy about it. Exactly. Like, Stan Van Gundy, what do you think about China? He's like, uh, chow mein's delicious. <laughs> Coached in New York for a long time, and uh, 
You know, Hunan Gardens one of my favorite places. <laughs> I, I I I mostly like the dumplings. I like them fried. I like them. They're, they're like, uh, thanks, Stan. They're not asking him because he's never put himself out there as somebody who has a political opinion. And that's what's so important for everybody to understand. They're like Pat Riley, what do you think about China? He's like prefer Italian suits, honestly. <laughs> so Adam Silver released a statement this week, and the truth is. I didn't really take, you know, issue with it. Did you? No. Nope. I thought it was a pretty good statement. It's a long statement. I'll read excerpts up from it. He says, I recognize our initial statement left people angry, confused, or unclear on who we or what the NBA stands for. Let me be more clear. Over the last three decades, the NBA has developed a great affinity for the people of China. We've seen how basketball can be an important form of people-to-people -people exchange that deepens ties between the United States and China. Okay, and he continues to go on and on, and uh, this is an important piece, I think, that he says. But for those who question our motivation, this is about far more than growing our business. Values of equality, respect, and freedom of speech have long defined the NBA and will continue to do so. As an American-based basketball league operating globally, among our greatest contributions are these values of the game. It basically... What it's it's a well crafted statement because what he does is he says we have a business relationship with China. Bringing basketball to China, I think, is good for everybody. We want to keep working with China. At the same time, unlike the NFL, we're not trying to curb anybody's free speech. So say what you want, do what you want. That's up to you. We'll deal with anything that that comes from it. I'm sure behind closed doors, all the owners are saying, hey, guys, just stay the fuck out of it. Just don't make it a deal. Like, just yeah. try to avoid being a part of this entirely. Uh, he certainly doesn't tackle the human rights violations of China. He's also not trying to blow up their relationship with China. Yeah. But he also isn't saying, you guys can't say this. But even that statement alone, I, I don't think people realize how bad this communist regime is in China. Even his statement, like Joe's saying, where he's not trying to ruffle feathers, it ruffled China's feathers. Because China is anti-free speech. Exactly. And so him saying that American players or people in the NBA can say whatever they want, they're like, how dare you? We actually have a law that prevents people from saying whatever they want. We censor people. So China responded to Adam Silver's statement with this. And again, this is a translation. This is a CNBC translation. We have noticed that Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, who is, partic who is participating in an event in Japan, has responded to Houston Rockets general manager Maury's post of inappropriate Hong Kong-related remarks. We are strongly dissatisfied, and we oppose Silver's claim to support Maury's right of free expression. Right. I mean, listen to that. They're literally saying, we oppose free speech. It's wild. And then they go on to say, we believe that any speech of that challenges national sovereignty and is social stability is not within the scope of freedom of speech. What the fuck is China talking about? Well, that's also, and again, this is why a lot of people are upset, and this is why a lot of people are talking about the hypocrisy that's going around sports, because that last sentence is what anybody who says Colin Kaepernick should be blackballed or that a league can keep him out, that's exactly what they're saying. We believe any speech that challenges national sovereignty and social stability is not within the scope of freedom of speech. If you're coming at the flag, fuck you. Yeah. And what the truth is, is people who say that, you are, and that's why I always say, you don't want to support free speech? Move to China. They're... They're cool with it. Yeah. They fucking don't like it either. Yeah. And the last statement is big. To this end, CCTV Sports Channel of the Central Radio and Television Administration has decided to immediately suspend the current broadcast arrangements of the NBA preseason China games and immediately investigate all cooperation and exchanges involved in the NBA. So this is a big deal. So what they did, for people who don't know, the Lakers and Nets were over there, and I believe there was two other teams. They refused to air those games after Adam Silver's statement. So basically, we're at a stalemate in a way of 
China doesn't want to air the U.S. games. China currently has a deal, a broadcast deal with the NBA, which I believe is around one and a half to two billion dollars. So there is some serious money involved. And to go back to Joe's point earlier, that's why teams, a Yahoo article yesterday was pretty interesting from the financial side, said teams are already planning for a reduction in the salary cap in 20 2021 season so not this season but next season because of this basically what they're saying is china might say fuck you nba we're ending our deal which is then going to affect how much money everybody has which means a 10 to 15 percent drop in the salary cap which then it comes back to us as viewers guys let's say you love your houston rockets and this all affects the bottom line and you can't get the players that you want to get because your team has to cut your salary by 10 to 15%. Where are you going to stand as a fan? It's it's this trickle down effect is going to be very serious. Yeah. And I mean obviously every everybody every team is affected equally, but these things happen from year to year. Like it's funny that you say the Houston Rockets obviously they're the ones that started this yeah. whole thing, but like the Rockets uh, free agent situation with Russ, with Harden, with Capella. Like, the Rockets are actually pretty set going forward. They don't really need to make a big splash. But imagine you're a team that that is waiting to, you know, pick somebody up in the free agent market. That That's your next big leap. You're kind of shit out of luck because we know the players themselves aren't going to sign for less. Yeah. They're not going to take less money. And... Yeah, it's crazy, but in a way, like, could Adam Silver have done more? Could he have been bolder? Sure. sure. But he was pretty bold in saying, you can say whatever the fuck you want. Well, he was whatever they're saying behind closed doors, you can't now get punished if you say some shit if he's on the record of saying that. Yeah, I'll give him credit. I agree. Because even him just saying that, again, forced the national Chinese network, whatever the fuck it is, that airs the games to say, we're not airing your games. But I also want to talk about hypocrisy from the media side, because that's important. And the big dog here, the big guilty party, ESPN, which is owned by Disney. Disney is China's bitch. And if you've been watching South Park, you'll clearly know this. They've done an amazing job mocking Disney, Mickey Mouse in particular, this, this might be tough for Aaron to hear, but uh, even though he loves to support the communist regime by going to Disneyland all the time, uh, ESPN issued a memo which was leaked, which Deadspin wrote a story about, which explicitly discouraged any political discussion about China and Hong Kong. ESPN personalities have confirmed that this, this memo, it was in fact real so basically ESPN who for years has had no problem discussing political stuff now I know they've changed recently under a new direction but they're telling their employees that you cannot discuss this yeah on air and for that ESPN a bunch of bitches too guys everyone's bitches it, dude at the end of the day my, my point is this. How much money do you need? The, the, to, to me, this is, this, and I'm, I'm, dude, number one capitalism guy. I'm all for capitalism. But I'm also a guy, at a certain point, how much is too much? But it's not, it's not necessarily the grand corporate thinking. You've got to remember that corporate, corporations are still run by people. So if you're the president of ESPN, or if you're a board member of Disney, this is going like, hey, I don't want to lose my job because we look at our books and we're down 40 percent from last year. So you're making everybody makes a decision that is to save their own ass. Yeah, I agree. everybody's making the Steve Kerr is not talking about it because he wants to be a coach in the NBA. James Hart is not talking about because he wants to be a millionaire in the NBA. Uh, Adam Silver is 
is saying you can say whatever you want because he doesn't want to be taken. He doesn't want to be torn out of his seat by people who are like, wait, are you curbing free speech? Even though he could have easily done that since every single owner in the NFL and the commissioner got away with it. So everybody's just trying to save their own butt. And in, in ESPN, they're like, hey, we're owned by Disney. We don't want them coming down on our thing. Just don't fucking talk about it. And the beauty of the media these days is we are, we've we been saying fuck ESPN for longer than we've been saying fire Dave Roberts. I think we literally have a title from 2014 on this show, fuck ESPN. Because... They've become they've become bigger than you know what they were. Now they are this. Now they are the face of sports media, and they can drive stories to be anything that they want them to be, and they can make it Tim Tebow twenty four seven and Johnny Manziel twenty four seven and like whatever they decide is the story is the story, and they're basically ignoring this story, even though it's one of our, the biggest sports stories that we've had, maybe ever. But it's not even just ESPN. All these reporters, you're all cowards. But the beauty of, well, there's people doing it, and there's people getting shut down, and there's but, but whatever But why are happening. people not asking Steph Curry directly? And by the way, and I quote tweeted this video of Steph. Again, I, I agree with what Joe has said. I'm not expecting the players like Steph or James Harden or whoever. You don't have to be that outspoken. But when you set yourself up, when you've posted tweets or had many discussions about rights for black people, about rights for the LGBTQ community, or about gun control. This falls in that same line, bro. This falls in that same line. So when Steph Curry is responding to a reporter and saying, there's going to be some things that need to be sorted out, I just don't know enough about Chinese history and how that's influenced modern society. This is not going away, so we'll come back to that. Bro, you're a black man in America. But you, he, have, but, but you I, of all people should know. But I believe that Steph Curry isn't sitting there going like, hey, before practice today, can can we get a couple professors over here to explain me the history of China? I agree. But I'm sure Steph at this point is aware that there is basic human rights atrocities that are happening in China. This isn't anything new. And to follow it up, I think a reporter should straight up say, when he gives that answer, if you're a legit reporter, you straight up say to Steph, Steph, do you think people should have the right of freedom but of you're, speech? Again, you are now, you're, you're not considering the fact that we are an independent media source. We are the Dirty Sports Podcast. We can say whatever the fuck we want. Sure. We don't have to answer to anybody. That reporter still has to answer to somebody. And that reporter's editor has to answer to somebody. And and the editor has to answer to the publisher. And the publisher has to answer to some major media conglomerate that runs the paper that's probably owned by China. Like, it all, like, follow the money. It all comes back to you. So everybody's looking out for their own ass. Yeah. Is our boy from Black Sports Online, if he gets a credential, going to be like, what up with China? Like, yeah. Robert Latow. Yeah. He's going to keep it real. Yeah, and we would too, which is why they'll never give us press credentials Press credentials to go and ask. And and the same thing happens on the other side. You know, I, I, we, I've been talking about the whole thing. The hypocrisy is on both sides. Everybody that was pro the NFL blatantly curbing freedom of speech – Wanted to say, hey, what's up with the woke NBA? These guys are being super hypocritical. Well, then Adam Silver came out and was like, our players can say whatever they want. No one's getting fined or suspended for having an opinion in our league. And now all those conservative fucking news outlets are spinning, trying to spin this story and being like, well, you know, they're still, they don't. And you're, it's like everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody's trying to make their own angle everybody's trying to make their own money that's the beauty of having our show is i can stay sit exactly where i've always sat and been like yeah i said this about the nfl i'll say it about the nba i'll say it about comedy i'll say it about cancel culture i'll say it about whatever like you can't be fucking punished for saying whatever the fuck you want unless it's fire in a crowded theater
And the bigger problem that this has shined a light on for me is the sad state of affairs that we are all owned by China. <laughs> I mean, it's it's sad. I mean, I mean, twerks over here goes to Disneyland. Hey, man, you said you're a proponent of capitalism. Everybody's buying all the shit. That's what I'm saying. So it is what it is. But that's what I'm saying. I'm just I'm just owning up to it, and I've known it forever. But I also do like.